Have you ever seen one of those girls who's just crushing life? This girl is always working hard, pushing past failures to success. She's a ninja babe, and that's you. You are that girl who has confidence oozing out of her skin. You crush it on the ninja course and follow after your dreams full throttle. You focus on being you, and you don't compare your journey to anybody else's. As the Ninja Babe community, we support and encourage one another to excel at what we do, and we aren't afraid to be transparent about our failures. It's about being willing to be yourself, be strong in your life's adventure, and inspire others to do the same. You're listening to the Ninja Babes podcast episode 20 with Addie Wales. Hey, does anybody know what's happening on Saturday, February 2nd? Ninja Babes workshops are happening here in New Jersey. I'm so excited to go to the Edge Sports Center in Flemington, New Jersey and hold three Ninja Babes classes. One of them will be for ladies only, and then the other two are for kids. Classes start at 10 a.m., go till 1.30. So definitely check it out if you're in the New Jersey area. I would love to see you there. I'd love to meet you if we haven't met yet. Train together and really hone in on both the mental and physical strength that it takes to be an amazing ninja. These are mind and body classes. So I go in depth about visualization, how to strategize on the course, and really just hike your mental game up to the best that it can be and believe in yourself and feel great about everything that you do on the ninja course. You can sign up at theedgesportscenter.net slash special dash events, or you can head on over to theninjababes.com slash events, and there'll be a link there as well that you can sign up at. I can't wait to see you there. This will be a great way to fine tune your mental game right before NNL finals and just really get you in that great headspace and you'll be raring to go for finals. I'm so excited and finals is so close this year, so it's perfect. If you're in the Flemington area, I would assume if you've qualified, you're definitely going to finals. So head on over to those workshops on February 2nd. Well, hello and welcome to the Ninja Babes podcast. Today I am here with Addie Wales and I'm so excited because I am home in New Jersey and Addie, where are you? I'm in Minnesota. Woohoo, good old Minnesota. I feel like I was just there because I was. <laughs> it wasn't too long ago. No, it was just a couple weeks ago, and that was really fun. I always really like to ask people their high point, low point. So for today or maybe this weekend, what was like your high point, like the best thing that happened, and then your low point, like the not so greatest thing that, that happened? My high today was getting to work out at the end of the day. Um, we did a lot of pull ups and some overhead presses, and it just felt really hard, but really good. And my low was getting my oil changed and finding out that I need a little bit more maintenance on my car. That's never fun. (laughs) Oh, man. (laughs) Well, at least it's better to find out that way than like breaking down on the side of the road in Minnesota winter, maybe. (laughs) Very true. (laughs) (laughs) When I lived in Minnesota for school, my roommate, who's from Wisconsin, was like, she would I would always notice she had this like emergency like pack in her car of like blankets and like flashlights and stuff and it really scared me because I was like what do you mean we could get stranded in like on the side of the road in your car and like it's freezing out here and it's like negative 20 we could like freeze to death it was always a really scary thought to me I bet her mother put her up to that probably (laughs) (laughs) Mrs. Brown she's always watching out for us uh well Addie, I'm really excited to have you on the show because you are an expert yogi and I can't wait to hear all the things that you have to say because tell us a little bit about yourself. You are a ninja and you are an amazing yoga girl. Am I right? (laughs) Thanks. Um, I have been doing yoga for almost 10 years now. I started in college and at first it was just a way to relieve stress and it was an hour out of my day that I could just focus on myself. and. I grew to love it so much that I wanted to share it with other people. So I took my 200-hour yoga teacher training directly out of college. And then just recently, I finished my 500-hour yoga teacher training. So there was four years in between each of those different trainings. Oh, wow. Did you stay local for your training or did you go somewhere? Yes, I did both of them in Minneapolis. Wow, that's amazing. That's really cool. So where do you teach yoga now? Yep, I actually teach at a climbing gym here. It's called Vertical Endeavors, and I'm teaching at their new bouldering gym. That's awesome. I've always admired 
those who can do yoga well because I do some yoga for like relaxation or just like mobility. Um, but some of the amazing like poses that people can do, it like astounds me. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> there are some really, really challenging ones. Some, some that I'll probably never do in my lifetime. <laughs> yeah. But I feel like yoga definitely has so much be- benefit for ninja. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted you on the show today is just to kind of clue us in on what are some great strategies and practices that we can be doing on our own that would not only be calming, but would be beneficial to our ninja. So. Yeah, totally. Well, why don't we jump into it? What do you What do you see? I mean, I'm sure you have a much different perspective than I do of like how you, when you you know visualize a course or when you even just like are practicing ninja, I'm sure your brain is like thinking in the back of your head, like how it relates to yoga. Yeah, there are a ton of benefits. Um, And when I started doing Ninja Warrior, I wasn't very good at any of the obstacles except for the balance obstacles. So I would say that yoga has a good crossover to balance. Um, I think particularly because yoga teaches you to focus on calming down your breath and slowing it down. And especially when you're doing balance obstacles, that's really important to try to get rid of those shaky nerves. It's also really beneficial for injury prevention, um, especially when it comes to the shoulders. And I actually created a little video for everybody that's listening. It's the um, five yoga exercises for shoulder mobility. That's perfect. And I think we all need that. <laughs> there's, there's so much wear and tear that we do on our shoulders, and I'm really excited to use that myself too. Um, I think that would yeah, be you have to check it out. Huge, yes. Well, one thing we we're just talking about with balance. I know I just came from a competition on yesterday where the first two obstacles were like a quick run, jump into uh, punching bags, and you were doing a lot of hanging movements, and then battering ram into pvc battering ram and it was like a whole lot all at once and then you had to go straight into a tricky balance obstacle and i love balance i think i'm good at it and balance is definitely one of my strong suits and so when i got there though i was like oh hold on a minute i need to like take a step back and i need to breathe because i was so ready to jump right into it and my heart was like pounding from just having like ran through the first three obstacles Mm -hmm. so definitely finding that calm i needed a few seconds but i I was like taking deep breaths and i was like kara like relax like you're about to do this it's gonna be fine but like find your breath like golly gee like it really really took me quite a few seconds um so do you have any advice for just like especially in the middle of a course like how do you calm yourself and calm your breath down yes I know exactly that feeling when I'm running a course I try to just go obstacle to obstacle and in between each obstacle if I feel really nervous for the next one or if I can tell that my heart is racing I'll try to just pause and take three really deep breaths. Mm -hmm. If I can close my eyes, even better. It helps me get grounded and centered. Is it important to like breathe a certain way? (laughs) Like from your lungs or from your belly? I'm assuming like from your belly is better. In yoga, they teach breathing from the belly. Mm -hmm. Um, But different methods teach. I mean, there's all sorts of different methods out there. Do you do breathing exercises like before you even start a course or before you start training? Yes. So when I'm going into a competition, I try to find a quiet-ish corner where I can maybe just put my headphones in and close my eyes and focus on the course and visualize the obstacles that I'm going to be doing and try to figure out my strategy. And then at the same time, just taking some really slow, deep breaths and trying to get centered. That's so important. And I think even, I think it was in the Beard Babes episode talking to Alyssa Beard, how she was explaining um, when she's visualizing the course, she tries to even really think like, where am I going to be taking my breaths during these obstacles? Actually, I think I was just talking to Hunter Gerard about this too. I was talking to someone recently about it and just like the fact of, you know, when you're making certain lache swings or like different movements on the bar, like where are you breathing in, where are you releasing your breath? And how even that can so much like dictate um, your success on that obstacle. And I never really thought about it. Yeah, I wonder if Alyssa learned that from yoga at all. Because in yoga, we on the inhale is when you're opening up Mm -hmm. or you're lifting up. And then on your exhale, you're compressing and you're closing in. Right. 
That's really interesting to think about. And it's for someone who's not used to doing that, it can be confusing <laughs> to just think about trying to like, just imagine yourself doing that in the moment and in, in an obstacle. Mm-hmm. But it makes a lot of sense if you're really like breaking it down and giving yourself like the chance to think about it. Yeah, totally. Well, we should take some breaths right now. <laughs> okay, let's do it. So close your eyes if you're not driving. <laughs> if yeah. you are driving, please don't close your eyes. <laughs> I'll close my eyes. You can still do it with your eyes open. Um, And then go ahead and exhale all of the air from your lungs. And then inhale really deeply through your nose. And then open mouth, exhale, let it all go nice and slow. Let's breathe in slowly through the nose. Exhale, release really slowly. One last breath. Breathe in deeply. And then full exhale. And then just let your breath return to normal. And open your eyes and see if you feel any different, maybe a little bit calmer. I think so. (laughs) I definitely think I feel calmer. Um, it's also like when I do that, my brain totally goes to a different place. It's like I'm no longer like there's no longer a list and like words scrambled around in my brain. It's more like a calm suit of like color spinning around. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So it's definitely do you how do you start your mornings? Like, do you usually start with breathing exercises? I try to start my morning without my phone in hand because. <laughs> yeah. That just gets my mind spinning um, when I'm looking at all of the notifications and figuring out who needs my attention. So I like to start with like 10 to 15 minutes um, to myself. And it's a little bit different each morning, but sometimes that'll be just a little bit of stretching with some relaxing music. Or maybe I'll do a five-minute guided meditation. There's an app that I really like called Insight Timer. Okay. And you can choose from their guided meditations or just do a timer. Um, of course, I love to just make a cup of tea and or coffee, depending on how tired I am. <laughs> and then just try to sit and drink that before looking at my phone. That's great. And like the mornings that I do something similar where I'm just allowing myself the the space and the grace to like relax for a few minutes in the morning are definitely the better days. <laughs> it's like everything just is able to like tune up in its own time without having to like put so much force and pressure into jumping right into like a list of responsibilities. Yes, that's a really good way of explaining it. Speaking of tea, I'm drinking peppermint tea right now. Ooh. <laughs> Do you have any? Do you have a cup next to you? No, I wasn't sure how that it would affect the sound quality. <laughs> I could have told you that you can mute your mic when you take a sip because that's what I keep doing. Nice. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I find I drink way too much coffee. I know that. And so I try really hard to, especially it's easier in the winter to do this, but I try to only have coffee in the morning and then to like... F- just switch to herbal tea for the rest mm-hmm. of the day because I just like having the mouth feels like something to sip and taste the rest of the day. It's I I don't know and my something brain. warm to hold. <laughs> yeah, warm to hold and cozy going down the esophagus. <laughs> but um, <laughs> yeah, I think it's nice to especially to be able to like find whatever your little pathway is for finding calm, whether whether it is like first thing in the morning or even just throughout the day like because you know the day only gets crazier right (laughs) so Mm -hmm. usually by the afternoon it's good to be able to find a way to like reset and like take a break or like I'm sure you would probably have some good advice about even just like quick stretches or anything to do in the afternoon do you practice anything like that like midday yeah especially if I'm feeling tired if I can just move my body a little bit And even if I'm just sitting at my desk or standing at my desk, I'll do some calf raises or some some shoulder rolls or some neck rolls, anything to get the blood flowing and just to um, stop focusing on the computer for a moment. Definitely. 
I always feel, I don't feel bad necessarily, but I always feel like I feel for the ninjas who work, you know, desk jobs because I know all of our hearts just want to be moving around all day long. Yes. <laughs> and <laughs> so I, I always am like, oh man, like you came to training when you've been like in an office all day. Like, wow. Like my, my job is very all over the place. Sometimes I spend way too much time in the car driving. But my job as a freelance interpreter like keeps me up and about throughout the day for the most part. And then even if I'm just working on Ninja Babe stuff, like that that can be a whole lot more computer time with the website and whatnot. But I try to always make sure that I'm getting up and stretching. That's the other thing is like I feel like ninjas, depending on where you are in the country, you might spend a lot of time in the car, like driving to the ninja gym and then get back in the car for like an hour driving home. And I always just feel like here I am sitting again and now I'm going to like move all over like a crazy person. Then I'm just going to sit a whole lot more. I feel like I need to like stretch out again when I get home just to undo all the car sitting that I did. But (laughs) that's one thing that uh, I always, I think a lot about is like, you know, what can we do to make sure our hip flexors and like our glutes and everything aren't just getting like tight and folded up from like a day of sitting if that's our lifestyle. Yes, very important. Um, I'm actually lucky enough to live within 20 minutes of four different ninja gyms. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I don't have to deal smack. with that part. <laughs> <laughs> you're smack in the middle of it. That's true. But I do do a lot of driving to and from work, and then I have a desk job. But I recently got a standing desk, so That's I'm trying awesome. to work on my posture and I'm always doing something at my desk. I have a little balance pod that I stand on. (laughs) You keep it under your desk? Yeah, I do. (laughs) That's really cool. My coworkers have come to expect something. (laughs) I feel like all of us have those weird ninja quirks that like have seeped into the rest of our normal lives and people are just Mm -hmm. like, oh, you do that. (laughs) Yeah. When I was doing um, mini ninjas pull up program and it was like 10 pull ups throughout the day, work your way up to 50, I would just um, do it, stand up from my desk and head over to the pull-up bar in the door frame and pound out some pull-ups. Yes, that's just the best. <laughs> and I love that you're doing that. And I love that you have the ability to do that. Yeah, I at home, when I work at home, I have my Monstro rig like right here in between my living room and dining room. Um, and that's perfect and amazing. But when I'm like at a job or something all day, I, I'm constantly just like, what could I do right now that I could work out? <laughs> like, where can I go pull my body up on something? And it's funny I because... I know the feeling. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny because I know some coworkers that know me well at this point, they they can tell when I've like got that look in my eye, like, what could I be doing right now? And they just think it's funny because they're like, I bet you could <laughs> climb that thing. And I'm like, yeah, I bet I could too. <laughs> I know for me, especially especially in the morning if it's going to be before a competition or if I'm getting close to a competition or even if it's just, you know, you wake up and you're just like, why? (laughs) Like, why am I awake right now? I just want to go back to bed. Um, I try to really take a few moments to look at myself in the mirror and really just look at myself and be like, all right, Kara, it's a new day. It's going to be a great day. Like, I am excited for whatever's planned and just being able to I don't know. There's something about looking at yourself in the mirror and accepting who you see and loving and appreciating who you see and what you see and just just appreciating yourself and going from there and allowing your day to just stem off of an appreciation and thankfulness for who you are. Um, for me, it makes a world of a difference when I'm, I feel, I do feel my, uh, my most calm and centered when I'm just like, here I am and it's a new day and we're just we're going to go with it and it's going to be a good day. Um, so whether I'm just going to work or, you know, especially on competition days, I, I think I talk about this a lot, but um, I do have like a little affirmation or a mantra that definitely changes periodically, but it, it's something like, I'm Kara, I'm strong, I'm capable. I know what to do on the course. I know how to set a good strategy for myself. And I know I'm capable of accomplishing that strategy. And just like affirming to myself that self-belief and the ability that I can accomplish what I set out to do is just, it just puts me in the right mindset, puts me in like a good uh, like frame of mind to, to really do my best and to not worry about comparing myself to somebody else or 
you know, worry about what's going to happen if I mess up or what's going to happen if I fail. It just helps me to like be confident and focus on myself and be appreciative of every moment that's going to happen that day. Yeah, I think that mental peace is really important. Um, When I'm trying to learn a new yoga pose or trying to do a challenging ninja obstacle, um, usually it's my mind that's holding me back and I just need to tell myself, you are capable, like you're going to get it this time. And that's when it happens. (laughs) I can totally agree. When I was in uh, Minnesota and I had some of the Ninja Babes workshops, I talked to some of the girls about like, (laughs) do you ever have that moment when you're doing an obstacle, like you're practicing an obstacle and you keep failing, or maybe it's even an obstacle that you've done before. And maybe it's a big lache or like a lache move and you're on there. And as soon as you are like about to let go of the bar and make your move all you can hear in your head is like you're not gonna get this or like that was you're gonna fall like or like nope you just hear those words and maybe you probably do fall or maybe you get it and you really surprise yourself but it's like I feel like there's we always run into those moments of what am I listening to like am I telling myself that this is going to be a good run or am I just bashing myself at every move that I'm making. I think it just makes a world of a difference to just set yourself up for success. And that's not to say that we don't really look at things critically and strategize and really think where our faults could be and think, you know, how, what am I doing that's wrong and how do I fix this? Or just being realistic. And if some, if something is very hard, I'm not going to walk up to a 16 foot lache and be like, nope, Carrie, like, <laughs> you can do this. Like, you're going to get this one shot right now. Like, don't doubt yourself. Like, sure, I want to try my very hardest and believe that I'm capable of lacheing as far as I possibly can. But I'm not going to un- underestimate the fact that something like a 16-foot lache is several <laughs> feet further than I've done before. So Totally. I have an example. Um, I recently got my straddle press to handstand and I've been working on pressing to handstand for probably eight years or since I started doing yoga. It's been a goal of mine to do that pose. And I wasn't getting it, wasn't getting it. I was practicing all of the drills and working on all of the areas that I thought I was weak or making up all of these excuses and reasons why I wasn't getting it. And I think all along I was strong enough and flexible enough, but I kept telling myself, you know, you're not going to get it. Like you'll never be able to do this and just beating myself up over it. Mm -hmm. And that mindset was what was holding me back. And then one day I just, I don't know, inside I told myself, you're going to get it this time. And then I did it. That's amazing. (laughs) I totally shocked myself. (laughs) Yeah, sometimes the moment when you finally get it, it's definitely like, what? This is me. I'm still holding on to this bar or (laughs) I'm still in this pose. Uh, How do you find a balance between yoga and ninja? Do you feel like you have an equal balance or do you sort of go back and forth? It's hard to find a balance. Um, If I had all the time in the world, I I would do both every day. I said that, but then I think my hands would be way too torn up from all the ninja. (laughs) I would love to be able to do yoga every single day and ninja three or four times a week. But, you know, there just isn't time for that. So usually it ends up being yoga one or two days a week and ninja two days a week. Um, I say that yoga is my yin and ninja is my yang. Ninja I just do for fun and for thrills. And then yoga, I just really need that to get centered. Yeah. I could see that. That's a really cool way to look at it. Do you feel like ninja and yoga challenges you in different ways? I feel like they're challenging in a similar way. Um, I mean, both of them, I find poses or obstacles that are challenging. And um, once I finally get them, it's like really, really rewarding. But um when you don't get them, it's really, really humbling. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. So I definitely want to know more about the shoulder exercises that you have for us. The five yoga exercises for shoulder mobility that you told us about. I definitely mm-hmm. want to know more about them because I think my shoulders could for sure benefit. Yeah. So I put together five different exercises. Um, most of them I've learned through yoga, but they are kind of a mishmash. 
between different disciplines, Mm -hmm. um, gymnastics as well. And a couple of them you can use props for that you should be able to find in most gyms or that you probably already have at home. In general, they're focused on opening the front line of the body and working through full range of motion in the shoulders and then finding some engagement in the upper back. And while you're doing them, you want to think about staying really long in the neck. So there's a lot of space between the shoulders and the ears. And another important thing for all five of the exercises is drawing the lower rib cage in and keeping the belly engaged. Yeah, anything, any other questions on that? Or do you want to just let people go to the video? We will definitely point people to the video. But I do want to say I feel like you know, shoulder mobility and just proper shoulder health in general is so important, but especially for us as ninjas. If you think about the wear and tear that we put on our shoulders on probably almost a daily basis, um, I think it's really important. And I know myself and so many ninjas that I know have gone or are going to a PT or some sort of um, like recovery specialist at either now or have been um, for their shoulders. So I think it's really important and I'm really excited that you have put this video together to share with us because I think everyone can benefit. It's better to give the shoulders a little bit of love and attention before injuries happen so that they're stronger and that you can come back faster if if you do end up getting an injury. But even just for, you know, even if you're not thinking about injury, um, just for strengthening your shoulders in the proper way to allow, you know, proper muscle muscle building without imbalances or um, just allowing yourself to be optimal in your shoulder strength. I think we all want that. <laughs> Addie, if you want to share what your Instagram handle is so that people can find the video either on your Instagram or it will also be on the Ninja Babes YouTube channel. But your handle is... Yoga Ninja Girl. Kombucha. Yes. I want to jump to one of my favorite topics, which is kombucha. Addie and I bonded this one time when I was at Addie's house because I realized that she also brews homemade kombucha and I was like nerdily excited. How long have you how long have you been brewing? Um I've been brewing for almost four years now and I still have my original SCOBY. Isn't that amazing? I just love it. For those of you who don't know about kombucha, Addie, would you like to explain what is kombucha? So kombucha is fermented tea. It's just black tea and sugar and then you Put a SCOBY in there, and a SCOBY is a culture of bacteria and yeast, so it creates a fermented, bubbly, fizzy tea. Yes, and it's delicious, and you can flavor it like a million different ways, and it's great. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's filled with healthy probiotics, which are good for your gut. And for me, it's helped with digestion. What sort of, like, do you drink kombucha every day? Or like, what did you do in order to really see a difference for digestion? Yeah, I do drink about a bottle a day. And I used to buy it, but it was getting really expensive. So I thought I should try brewing my own. And I've loved brewing my own because it's actually really easy. And then I get to choose any flavor that I want. Yes. And you also get to gross out your friends with the scobies. (laughs) Yeah. That's that's probably my favorite part. part. Yeah. (laughs) Definitely. Yeah. I. I just, I don't even remember when I started. It had to be around the same time as you, I think a good four four or five years ago. Um, But I remember the first time I brewed it and it, like I, you know, I looked up all these articles online of how to do it. And the first time I actually successfully like got everything going, I was like, what is this thing growing in here? (laughs) It's just like such a wild experience, but it's so fun. And (laughs) I've like, you know, you accumulate so many SCOBYs because they, you know, like they reform a, a new culture um, every time you brew. And so I've given away so many and I just feel like I'm spreading the love of kombucha and helping people yeah. start their own. <laughs> Scooby <laughs> love. Scooby love. Do you have a favorite um, flavor combination? Oh, anything ginger. I love to do fresh ginger. But I've also been doing um, spearmint, which is delicious, or lavender. And sometimes I'll combine a few different things. Ooh. How about you? I really like basil. Um, Ooh, yum. Basil is probably one of my favorites, but I also love ginger pear. That sounds good. Usually, yeah, those are my two go-tos for sure. Any sort of fresh herbs? 
I think I can definitely link to some how-to videos for scobies and kombucha if anyone is interested because it's really worth it, especially if you do like kombucha and you've just been buying it from the store. It, it adds up really quick and gets pretty pricey, but like you said, it's extremely cheap to make it yourself. Addie, it's been so great having you on the show and I definitely learned a lot and can't wait to continue to practice my breathing exercises and to check out that mobility video. I'm really excited to give my shoulders some extra love. Where can people reach you and find out more about what you do and and your practice and everything? You can find me on Instagram as Yoga Ninja Girl. Definitely check her out. And thank you so much for listening to the Ninja Babes podcast. You can subscribe and write us a review on iTunes. Check out the Ninja Babes YouTube channel for Addie's video and a ton of great other content. Thank you so much for listening. Bye. Bye. Be strong, be you, be a ninja babe.